Thanks, Ian. All right. Yeah. So bef before I, I was a developer, I, sp I spent um, I spent some time in the restaurant industry, and um, I specifically when I was managing um, a restaurant had a problem with taking online orders um, because there was nothing out there that would allow us to take online orders and also make a profit at the same time. It was like choosing one or, one or the other one. Um, <clears throat> so so that, that, was, that was a pain point that we had and that was back in 2015, 2016. And, um, and then after I kind of switched careers and, and decided to learn um, how to program and all that stuff, it seems like a few years later, a lot of restaurants st still had the same problem that I had back in the day. And even though there were like more popular solutions um, by that time, like DoorDash and Grubhub um, that a lot of restaurants use, um, to me it just seemed like there was a clear difference between little restaurants that are using those things and big international chains like Domino's Pizza or Papa John's or something like that that have um, like a real technology stack and, and also are not paying like half of their money in commissions. Um, <clears throat> so I talked to, uh, to, a lot, to a few restaurants that, that, I, that I visited um, and that I loved and that they just don't sell on, they just didn't sell online um, because it was just not prof profitable for them because of the high commissions just for them to take online orders. Um, for example, from DoorDash and Grubhub, up, they can be over 50% of what the customer actually pays, uh, which sounds outrageous, but <laughs> it sounds hard to believe, but, it, but it's just the truth. Like um, I, I have, um, I had uh, restaurant owners show me the receipts and, and, and breaking it down for me. And, and to me, that, that, that seemed outrageous. Um, so I thought that there was probably a, um, a good opportunity to, to jump into that now that I, that I was actually working as a programmer, because at first I thought, well, it shouldn't be so hard to just take online orders um, and, and build on from that. Um, so I started with a, with a restaurant um, that was close to, to my job when I worked at Kroger. And the guy was so excited for me to build this that he actually paid me $4,000 ahead of time just for um, just to be the first person that gets on it. Because for him, it was cheaper to pay to pay that than to pay, again, the, the, the crazy commissions that, that other companies are charging. And so that was that was very encouraging to me when it, when it came to that. <clears throat> it, it was like some somewhat some some sort of strong validation that maybe this is actually solving a problem. And then I, I talked to a few other restaurants, and then I got to the point where I had about five restaurants that wanted to sign up, but I didn't have anything built. <laughs> um, so I, I I started I started building it slowly. I definitely um, underestimated how much work it was actually gonna be, um, especially considering that I wanted to build it as a platform rather than just like build an app for a restaurant as if I was an agency that, you know, that some restaurant just paid me and I built it. Uh, I wanted to build it more like a platform where I could just basically take any restaurant that wants to sign up and within a few minutes uh, I could have them like, I could have their whole like internet presence um, be a little better and be able to take online orders, have reward programs and all that type of stuff. Um, so it, it came to a point where I wasn't moving as fast as I wanted to during, um, especially during during the pandemic and, and, and I was busy with a lot of other stuff too. So um, since 20, since August, 2020, so almost a year from, almost a year ago, I just been working on this and, and trying to, um, and trying to, to, to get the MVP launched so that we, so that we can actually get restaurants on board. Um, it definitely took me a lot longer than I thought um, it, it would, but, but it's, it's, it's finally coming together. So I'm excited for that. Um, yeah. And right now 
I I am in I'm actually on on vacation, <laughs> but uh, but I, I I took the um the the time to do this um because um Chris asked me before I went on vacation and 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 I'm also kind of excited to show it off and see what what other developers might think um and I think probably like the most important part about all of this is that I was able to build the whole thing with JavaScript, which definitely helped me um, be able to do it all on my own. I try to, to ask other developers for help and see if they wanted to jump in and help me code. But as you guys know, <laughs> developers are already busy and, and, and every single developer has a bunch of people that want them to, to help them work on something. So. So that that didn't seem like it was gonna happen at least until I had some money to pay people. Uh, so, but because it was all in JavaScript and because I had like some experience working at startups, it was um, it was doable for me for me to do by myself. Um, so now I'm gonna try to give you guys a, a quick demo of kind of how it works. Let me see how I wanna do this. So I didn't have this, this part planned out, but I'll see if I can just show my phone, like placing an order from um, a demo restaurant that I have in, on here. Is, is that good enough if I, if I do that? Can you guys follow? Or would it be better if I just share the screen and try to do it on the browser? I would say if you can share the screen and try to do it on the browser, that would be. OK. I'll try to do that then instead. OK, give me one second. All right, can you guys see that? Yep. <clears throat> All right, cool. So I'm just gonna show you guys. I know we don't have all day. It's actually almost halfway over. So I'm, I'm trying to make it quick so that we can get to the questions part. But basically it's just a very simple um, MVP mobile app where a user can go and place an order. Um, they can, one of the things that I took a lot of pride on building was that, um, items are the way in which items can be customized is very systematic here uh, when I have seen that a lot of other um, online ordering services they don't really let you customize the um, the items in a normalized way they usually just have a, a box where you can put a note and then the restaurant can either decide to honor that or not to uh, so for example if you ask for extra cheese on a note but the restaurant charges money for extra cheese, then the restaurant has to make a decision. Do I want to give this person extra cheese for free or do I want to not give them extra cheese and risk them being not um, happy with their order? But um, but I, I try to normalize all of that because that was uh, one of the pain points that a lot of, um, that a lot of the restaurant that I spoke to um, had. 
basically that when people were placing order online, they didn't have the same, um, it wasn't as easy for them to, to customize items. So now that I have my order, I can just go to my car. Um, and here is just my very simple order from this restaurant. Um, I put my information here and I go to pay. This is all just working to drive. Oh, no, nope. cancel, wrong card. And this is just a Stripe sample credit card number. And here is the order tracker that at this point is telling um, is telling me that the order was placed and that the restaurant actually received it. Uh, and it's giving me my, my order details and all that. And here on the, for example, I have a, I have a knife but here. I tried to share it on the screen too, but I'm just kind of wanted to show you because this is kind of like what the restaurant would have to be able to receive the order. Uh, but um, yeah, it works on an iPad, but I'll show you guys on the, on, the, um, on the actual browser so that it's easier to actually see. So here. All right, are you guys still able to see the screen, right? Yep. All right, cool. So this is the order that I just placed. Here the restaurant can, can just kind of like the order ID, how long ago I placed it, what type of order it is, customer information, um, the, the actual order and the total. And then here the restaurant can decide whether they want to accept the order or if they want to reject it for some reason. So let's say in this case, uh, the restaurant accepts it and they can change the time. Let's say that, I don't know, 15 minutes. Sounds good. Now the order, I have to move this zoom bar. But that order was now accepted. And as you can see, now the tracker on the person's phone is saying that, you know, that their order is actually being made at this point. And it actually tells them what time they should expect it to be ready. And it has the direction so they can click on it if they just for whenever they want to go pick it up. Um, and also, I'm using Twilio to be able to to send text messages to the customers, telling them their status of the order. I don't know if you can see that well, but because we don't really expect customers to, to place an order and keep their phone open on, you know, on the app. So, so that's why we also have um, text messages. And then uh, let's say when the restaurant determines the order is ready for pickup, they can confirm that. Then I will get another text telling me that the order is ready. And then that should also be reflected here that the order is ready. And then the customer can go and pick up the order. And then that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much um, the, the, the MVP. There's, there's, there's other stuff, but I also know Chris wants to ask questions and things like that. So, um, so I wanna leave some time open um, for that. And any questions anybody else might have um, whether it's about me or about the app and, and everything. I, 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 <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is pretty awesome. I, I have a, a few different thoughts on, uh, questions. Um, I haven't seen, and would, I, I don't know how much of this is built out, but I'm kind of curious about the experience for the restaurant of like setting up their menu and customization mm -hmm. and. How okay. Yeah. So for for the restaurant, like setting up their menu and all and all that stuff, um, and and, and customizing it, um, the way that that I'm doing it right now, kind of like with the MVP, it's that I'm just I'm just building it out, um, 
I'm, I'm just setting up the restaurants myself and I'm actually in the, in the process of training my girlfriend for her to be able to do it. Um, so like the user interface that I have designed at this point, it's only for basically like a, an employee of my company to do it. Um, gotcha. because I, I do my, my goal is to have it be that any restaurants, any restaurant can sign up and they can easily make an account the same way that anybody can go and make a Facebook page. Um, but me being able to completely, completely finish that out, then we'll push back the MVP even, even farther. And since I'm not expecting to have hundreds or thousands of restaurants sign up right away, um, at this point, I can just kind of do them, do them one by one. But, um, and I can show you why some of the reason is, and it's pretty much because it doesn't look the best at this point. Um, but let me see. But in here, for example, this is where I kind of manage the items. I think this is kind of like what you were talking about a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah this is kind of where, where I can manage and add new items to the restaurants um, and add different items to the actual menu sections. And then you can always, uh, let's see. And this is kind of the interface that I am using to, to add all the modifications, to add what sites come with, with things, to add the price, whether it's available or unavailable, all that type of stuff. But I definitely want to make all of this look a lot better before I actually let the, um, the restaurant owners have um, direct access to that. But like I said, since, since I don't have hundreds of restaurants at this point, uh, um, it's, it's, it's not really a problem for me to just manually do them. Um, um, at the beginning. When you said it doesn't look ready yet, that looks a lot nicer than I was expecting. Oh, <laughs> I, oh well. <laughs> I, I guess uh, that, that, that kind of leads me to another thought I had. One of the things mm -hmm. that I think is super interesting about your adventure is like, I, I think you have like a, a couple skills that are super interesting to go along with your, um, your software development skills. First of all, like you were able to identify a business opportunity well enough that people are willing to give you money and not a, you know, not an insignificant amount before you even had something built. To me, that's like, you know, well understanding the business that you're trying to go after and how it works. And I think like not all of us developers, you know, have that yeah. and i think that's really really cool and the other thing is like you have the front end design skills to be able to to make something that looks i think pretty impressive um and not every developer can do that so i think that's an, a really interesting combination yeah i think those things just come kind of from from my love from from my life experience really um i don't think there's anything like you know, that I'm like any smarter than anybody else or anything like that. For example, the whole business idea, it literally just came because I remember working at restaurants and having that issue. Um, and then like years later, when I thought like, we are definitely at a point where that issue should, should be solved, uh, still finding out that there wasn't a clear solution for that. Um, I, I think that's kind of what it was. Um, I don't think that's like some other people that they can just pop business opportunities anywhere. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm nothing like that. Again, I, I just think I, I just, in a way, I just, I just stumble across that problem and, and didn't see a clear solution for that. So that's kind of why, why I took that on. And then when it comes to, to the design part, I, I, I don't think I am the best designer, but, um, before I got into, into coding, I try a little bit to get into design. Um, then I kind of left it alone because I don't know, it didn't seem as, it didn't seem that it, like it would be as fun as a career as coding and that it wouldn't pay as well either. <laughs> so that's why I know a little bit of, of, of design, but um, 
again, when when even when it comes to design, I still feel a little incomplete. Like I, I definitely wish I had like a full time person that that's all that they do um, to help me out. But what I try to manage with what I can. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the the architecture of the app, you know, the mm -hmm. front end, the back end, how they fit together and things like that? Yeah. So um, in the back end, I am I am using I'm using JavaScript pretty much everywhere. Um, I don't I mean, that is the language that I kind of. Um, that I kind of started with and just and just uh, stuck to it. When I was at Kroger, I did a lot of Java work for a while, but it was more kind of like because I had to more than because I wanted to. Um, and then when I when I went to Cloverleaf at the startup, um, they used JavaScript for everything, and and I think that's where um, where I actually um, got even more got even better with it. Um, but the back end is 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 all Node.js using Koa. Um, which you guys are probably familiar with, but if not, it's 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 very close to Express. Um, and if I remember correctly, it's it's built by the same people, but after they get an experience from building Express, um, and it's more it's it has like a more functional uh, paradigm around it. Uh, and then I'm using uh, GraphQL um, with Apollo to talk between the back end and the front end. And I think that that also makes it a lot, a lot easier um, than, than using like endpoints for everything because I can just reuse a lot of the same stuff by, by using GraphQL. And yeah, so, so I'm using GraphQL to communicate between the back end and the front end. Um, the database is on, is on MySQL and that's kind of where I'm, where I'm keeping all the data. Um, and then what else is important about the back end? I am, I am using um, also Apollo, um, the Apollo library for, for the subscriptions. I, that's why everything works instantly. And like, you know, like when the restaurant accepts the order, it, it shows up here instantly. All that stuff is working through Apollo subscriptions and it's using Redis uh, for the pop sub system. And and then the front end is is React with Next.js. Um, I'm starting to feel now like Next.js was maybe a little bit of overkill for, for this MVP, but that's kind of what I was using at my last job and I kind of got used to using it. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm using that. And kind of like my next step when it comes to like the, the architecture of, of how it all works is now I'm gonna try to use capacitor to um to 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 make the 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 actual native um apps for 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 iOS and, and Android um while still writing basically um code for the web and then all the all the uh all the all the servers, all the infrastructure, all that is um is on AWS, which was one of the one of the uh, was one of the main was one of the biggest things that I learned throughout this process was AWS because like when I was like when I worked at Kroger, you know we have teams that are dedicated to working with DevOps, so we didn't really mess with with DevOps things a lot. And then when I when I worked at my startup, um, they had their AWS thing set up and it was working fine. And it was just kind of like one of those things where I almost never ever had to touch it. Probably the whole two or three years I was there, I probably spent, I don't know, maybe 12 hours doing stuff with AWS during the whole time. So so it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really that much. Um, so I still put it on my resume because technically I did it, but but it wasn't really that much uh, that, that much experience. But working on this and kind of like having having to start everything from scratch um, definitely um, helped me get a helped me get a better understanding of AWS, and that's something that I'm actually um, pretty grateful for because there were so many concepts, especially for me being self thought um, that. I just never had the opportunity or I guess the need to learn 
kind of like, you know, like all the networking that you have to set up with AWS, security groups, um, how networks actually work, uh, uh, gateways, submask, oh, a, a lot of very technical things that with me not coming from a computer science background, I, I just wasn't familiar with um, and, and had to do a lot of a lot of research on. That's true, even if you have a computer science background, it doesn't matter. All this stuff changes so fast that <laughs> you, there's no, you got to dig in and learn it and the process is pretty much the same, I think. But yeah, that's that's really cool stuff. With the, uh, with the AWS, um, did you mostly do things like in the console or did you use any kind of like um, infrastructure oh. as code kind of thing or what have you been doing there? Um, I, I set up most, mostly everything through the console and then I'm using GitLab pipelines to automate everything. Um, so that's something actually that, that I am really, um, that's something actually that, that I'm really proud of on how I built this app. And it is that I can deploy changes like almost instantly, like I can write a line of code and it can be online in production in like in just the time that it takes for the pipeline to run, uh, which is usually like five minutes. Um, so, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. Every, everything, everything is, is, is automated, but yeah, so I use like the console to kind of set everything up. Um, and, and I'm using their AWS Fargate, um, containers, sorry, um, elastic container service, which basically is, it's everything is, is just running on on Docker and, and, and it gets duplicated if he has to. Um, I would say that my, my infrastructure is also probably overbuilt for what I have because I, I, I mean, this is simple enough that I could have just thrown all of this into a, um, just any like EC2 AWS server and just run it on there. But, um, but a, a lot of, with me building this app, I, I, I think, my second objective besides like hoping that, that it is successful and that someday it makes me some money. My second objective was that even if that didn't happen was that, that I learned, um, that I learned a lot. And so because of that, for example, when I was doing the AWS things, I try to not just do things the fastest way that I could, but also try to do it like well enough so that if I have to go um, and apply for other jobs and things like that, I can actually, I can actually have that experience help me for something. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm going to give a pause here and see if anybody else has some questions they want to jump in with. Otherwise, I'll ask some more. I'm just really hungry for tacos right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not gonna lie. Oh, that's too far away. Yeah, it it is it is it is far away. This is a a restaurant in 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 Youngstown. A friend of mine's actually um works there, and that's how I how I got there, how I got that business <laughs> to jump on board. I was wondering if you could maybe show us um a little bit of how um, Apollo subscription, subscriptions work in the app, if that isn't too much to spring on you, if there's uh, any code that might be showable. Yeah, let me, let me, let me see if, 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 if I can, because first I have to remember how it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, ha I have the code base open, so it shouldn't be too hard. Um, Are you using AppSync for that? No, I am, I am not familiar what AppSync is. I, I meant uh, AWS AppSync. OK, sorry. Mm -mm, no, I am not. Or I, I don't think I am, because I feel like if I was, I probably would be more familiar. What does that do? Is that for, for the subscription thing? 
Yeah, it, it, it uh, does all that subscription thing um, much easier. So I said, because you said that you were using uh, AWS, I said you were using it. Sorry, for, I didn't want to understand. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not using OpSync. Um, I'm just using the, the built-in um, subscription thing with, with Apollo. And then um, for when there's more than one server, um, then I'm using Redis to do the pop shop to make sure that all the servers um, are in sync. But let me let me try to open the code, see if I can find where, where I'm actually, where I have the, the Apollo subscription. All right, I am not sure if this would be able to be understood or not, but uh, I'll try my best. As you can see, since it's just hey, me working Omar. on this. Yes. Can we get a font bump? Sorry, old eyes. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. You're good. You're good. It's my eyes are really old. Uh, I just switched to a 13 inch computer and it's, um, I'm still waiting on the bigger ones. <laughs> And I'll be making the, the font even smaller to see if I can make more stuff fit on the screen. So all right. So it's been a while since I messed with this stuff, but I'm I'm gonna try to do my best to uh to remember it. But if you guys are familiar with uh with Apollo um in the resolvers. Um, you usually have your your mutations and your queries, and then when you use subscription, you just have a new type that's called um, that's called sub subscriptions. Um, I'm, I'm guessing not everybody's familiar with what GraphQL is, so you might start with like a really brief description if you can. Yeah. So um, yeah. So GraphQL the way the the way that that it works is that instead of having multiple um, endpoints in your in your um, web server, what you do is you basically have one endpoint. It's basically, in my case, is like API slash GraphQL, um, and then from that endpoint. Basically, it, it it almost has like its own um, like syntax of things that you can send to it. Um, and I'm sorry, this this is just kind of like the way that I think about it. Probably not the best technical definition, but it's just one endpoint that you can speak that you can speak to in this kind of like language uh, called GraphQL, and then you can basically ask it um, for for whatever you want as long as you have. Um, as long as you have resolvers that tell, um, as long as you have resolvers that then basically tell the server what information to, to retrieve for the user. Um, so let me see if I can give a, um, an example. So for example, I can query for I can this is one query that I can make to my GraphQL um, to my server that is using GraphQL that's called get order. So the same endpoint basically the, the only endpoint that I have or one of the few ones that I have the one for GraphQL. Um, 
I tell it, hey, I need the order and I pass it the order ID. And in this case, I pass it a payment intent ID. And then that should return an order. Then what GraphQL does is what Apollo does is that it goes and looks at the, um, at the resolver on how to solve, you, you know, on what information to return when I, when I, when I request this with, with this information. So the get order for get order that should be somewhere in a resolver here. Um, that is, that is a query. A query just means that I'm querying data and a mutation just means that I'm mutating. You can use it, you could switch it if you wanted to, but just for convention, usually queries are for getting data, mutation are for mutating it. Um, so if I looked at my queries here, here is my query that says get order inside of the resolvers. And then all this does really, it's called this function that's going to return what I need. So basically, every time I, I call this endpoint and I tell them, hey, give me an order, and I pass it an order ID or a payment intent ID, it calls this service that, that gets me the order. And this is, just a, this is just a function that does something. And in this case is, in this case, it's just find, finding it um, from the database. And as you can see, I was doing a lot of debugging here. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm sorry that I don't, that I don't have a um, better way to explain it, but, but that's basically what GraphQL is. It's basically one endpoint and you can kind of just read the documentation on, on how to speak to it, but then you can, uh, you can ask it for, for you can ask it for anything that you want as long as as long as you have it in, in defining your schema. So in this case, for example, this is another thing that I have in a query. Uh, it's uh, site data. And if I, I just need to pass it a subdomain, that's kind of how I determine which restaurant the, the user is, uh, um, is looking at. So for example, if they go to your restaurant that by jet.com, it's gonna be different than if they go to my restaurant that by jet.com. So based on the subdomain, um, I am I am retrieving some some like basic site data. Now, if I wanna look at the resolver for what the I was just messing with this actually right before this call. Um, if I want to look at the resolver for for getting my site data, it's just every time I try to I try to query that, it just calls this function that goes and get all my site data and that returns like what colors to show on the screen. You know, like what color is going to be the fonts, the uh, the what logo to display to to the users and, and all that type of stuff. And probably a better way of seeing it would be. I think I need to change the screen here. Well, that's not the one. Can you guys see this screen, what I'm highlighting right now, where it says phone numbers? Yep. All right. So this is the, uh, the GraphQL playground. And this is kind of how I test thing and look at things. Um, so this is you, you basically writing stuff in the, with the GraphQL syntax. In this case, um, 
like I said, I'm in vacation. I'm actually in Miami right now. Um, so I was testing with some stuff and I was calling in Miami. Um, and when I quit details, and, and here I have a query that queries site data. And then I know what type of what type of things I can expect from my site data because I design my my schema in the in the code base. And since I have my schema in the code base, I can actually even see it here. And I can see what type of stuff I can retrieve from site data. For example, from site data, I can re I can retrieve this information about the chain. And I can retrieve this information about the um, the restaurant. And because it is GraphQL, once I'm in once I'm in, in here inside of the chain, then I can take anything from this chain, and I can see phone numbers. And then from the phone numbers, I you just keep you can just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. So that way, for example, if for one piece of your app, you only need, uh, let's say you only need, let's say there's a page in your app where all you need to know is the, is the, uh, is maybe the chain ID. And by chain, I mean like a restaurant chain. Uh, let's see, chain. I'm gonna have one more. So in this case, if, if I'm in a page and all I need is chain ID, in, in this code, you can pretty much copy it and paste it and put it in your front end um, to retrieve data. But if I'm if I'm somewhere in my React app and I want to retrieve chain ID, I can just I can just retrieve that. But if I'm somewhere different in the app and I also need to know like, okay, well, what styles go with that chain? Maybe I want to know the primary color. Then I can just add that on there. And then I would also get the primary color. The same way, maybe I, I also want to get the chain uh, address. And maybe, maybe I want to get the zip code from there. And it just shows here. So because of that's one of the things I, I mean, that is the main reason I love GraphQL. It is because you can use the same endpoint and if you have your schema defined correctly in the back end then you can just pretty much get whatever data you want whenever you want it and then subscribing does that use the same kind of uh syntax to tell it to what you want to have it update you with yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of similar. Honestly, I don't I don't know it by heart. Like I know the query and 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 uh, like I know queries and mutations because those I I do it all the time. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I don't know it by heart, but I I can probably just I would probably just Google it if I, if I need to remember that. It's been a few months since I implemented the whole subscription things, and I kind of implemented it and it just. Um, and it just works, but it, it's something like this. The same, the same way here that I'm using query with the subscription, I write something similar to that. And then every time, um, and then I have a trigger in the app. And every time that trigger is hit, my subscription returns new data. Uh, cool. Let me see. Yeah, I, I wish I wish I could show it, but I, I honestly just don't remember at the top of That's my okay. head. No, this has been really. And I think we're over the time now, so. Yeah, yeah, I kind of led you down a, a deep dive into GraphQL, but that's that, <laughs> that's cool stuff. Um, anybody else have some questions? I feel like there's probably lots of interesting things, but it's it's. I, I think it's really cool how, how far you've you've gotten and that certainly seems seems like you you're pretty close to an MVP. What are the um what are the things that you're looking to to do next? What are your you know upcoming challenges and plans? Yeah, so 
Um, the the thing that I'm that I'm trying to do next now is actually get the first restaurants on board. On 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 board it. Uh, I was supposed to do that um, two weeks ago, but I I really wanted to do it before my before I went on vacation that I already I had a plan since like last year. Um, and I didn't get to do that. Um, so as soon as I'm back in Cincinnati, my plan is to, is to start onboarding people like right away um, because I got the main thing where it works and people can place order and the, and, and the, the whole stripe is working, the, the, the money thing is working. Um, it's definitely still rough around the edges, but I, at the same time, that's just kind of how an MVP is going to be. Uh, but yeah, the the main my main goal right now is is really to um to come down to Cincinnati, which I'm leaving tomorrow actually, and then start and start start onboarding restaurants. Yeah, I'm gonna start with that with that first guy um, from from Blue Ash that I told you about, and um, I already talked to him and he actually wanted me to do it before I left. I just I just didn't have the time to do it then. Um, but that, but that is my next goal, and my next goal is to to have him on board, it. Um, actually test it in the real world, make sure that it actually that it's actually working, um, solve any issues that might come up, and then keep iterating and, and adding more restaurants. That's awesome. Yeah. Does anybody else have any? questions at all? Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to show us all this stuff. Um, you know, building this stuff by yourself, just sticking with it is impressive. And, uh, and getting so far that you're actually able to about the launch that's that's pretty cool so yeah for all that hard work yeah, it's, it's definitely being a being a process but well you know there, there's it's being it's 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 had it's up and down but but i i don't regret it at all i i i think it has been awesome and i feel like i learned a lot i think it also had um a great impact on me almost like psychologically <laughs> because it, it definitely um allowed me to get rid of some of the imposter syndrome because um now that i have kind of like built something from complete scratch i kind of feel like i understand the, the whole um ecosystem a little bit better all the way from the infrastructure to the to the very front end um and and, and yeah, it just it just makes me feel a little more like I'm like a like a real real developer, uh, instead of just somebody that's part of a team that knows how to do a little React or something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You definitely have to learn all the pieces when it's just you. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, again, it was. One of the main reasons that, that I ever wanted to learn how to code wasn't just so that I can go and get a job, but also so that I can build stuff. So that has definitely um, grown my skills in, 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 in that sense. Well, anybody else got any other questions? Oh, they're all being shy. All right. Well, we'll mm -hmm. go ahead and uh, post the video then, if that's cool with you, Omar. When we have yeah, that's fine with me. All downloaded. We'll probably post it on the Gaslight YouTube channel, but I'll post it to the Meetup page as well. Yeah. Um, I and, wish I was uh, a little more prepared for the subscriptions um, part. <laughs> no, maybe. I, I think it was a really good talk. I think it was super interesting. So. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Maybe I don't know. Someday in the future, I can maybe just talk about that and actually like prepare for the topic. <laughs> um, sure. No, I, I yeah, I steered you into a, a <laughs> into something. Yeah, you yeah, I didn't expect you to be. Yeah, give a random technical talk with no prepared warning. <laughs> 
no, it's all good. It's all good stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, um, Jim, you got it. I don't know. You, you do you know my email? I, I want to follow up on your uh, your offer to to talk there. Yeah, I'm back in the Cincy Tech Slack. If you want to DM me there or uh, like first dot last at engagepartners.com will work. 